It's time to talk about favorite things, and I'm going to tell you a few ideas about how we took the ugliest and most unloved space here at House Heidi, the caretaker suite, and transformed it into the meadow suite. My favorite thing about this suite, well, it now bears no resemblance to what it used to look like because this was not attractive. There was nothing worth saving. Originally, this space used to be the garage a long time ago when the house was first built. And then it got turned into a standalone suite. During the renovation on our TV series for HGTV Canada called Sarah's Mountain Escape, we transformed this into a dedicated separate guest suite. And I'm gonna take you through a few of the things we did. First things first, how do you make the most of a small space? Well, we realized that what we really needed to do was rethink the entire plan. The original layout was absolutely not working. And sometimes when you have a space that is not living up to its full potential, the best thing you can do is take it and shake it and pull it apart and put it back together in a completely different way. Think about your renovation in the same way you would think about using Lego as a kid. You have building blocks. You have the opportunity to put the elements together in a way that suits you and delivers the best results. So our solution was move it all. What used to be the kitchen became the bathroom. What used to be part of the bedroom and the storage became the kitchen. We were able to take the bathroom plus some wasted space and turn it into a dedicated standalone bedroom and we got a little living dining area. None of these spaces are huge. They're all slightly compact, but we wanted to make the most of it and cram in as much as we possibly could. So here's what we did. If you're thinking about small space, number one thing I would recommend to you is forget hallways. Use your rooms as transition zones. The less circulation space you have, the less dedicated hallways, the bigger the rest of the spaces are able to live and breathe. And if you forego hallways in favor of actual living space, you get to enjoy the spaces instead of just walk through them. Let's start at the beginning. Let's start in the entry. And this is a small entry, but I would always recommend to you Think about storage. When you're thinking about storage, maybe you wanna think about wall-mounted storage because then you still have the opportunity. You can tuck a little pair of shoes underneath it. You can float it off the ground. It makes it easy to clean. The cabinets here in our little entry area, these are actually repurposed. These are kitchen cabinets from Ikea that I'd bought to use elsewhere and then realized that I could repurpose them. I've stacked one on top of another and so we get full height storage here. It's 24 inches wide, it's about 12 inches deep and I've used a little leftover remnant from another area in the house to create a shelf. We've got hooks underneath, a mirror above, some leftover textured vinyl wall covering a fabulous mosaic floor, and all of this comes together to deliver a welcoming entry point, a space for storage, a place to set down your keys and your mail, and a mirror to check your look. Right, what more do you need? Next, let's step into the kitchen. It's important to have a kitchen zone that works. So we used to have a kitchen that was tucked in the back. It was crammed. You couldn't open the fridge standing in front of it. You had to kind of open it sideways. That's not functional. A galley kitchen delivers maximum prep area, counter space, open flow, looks great, and functions really well. So how did we do this? Step one, think outside the box. And what I mean is the big box. I bought in stock, ready to go, pre-assembled cabinets with the doors already hung. Look at these terrific gray door and drawer fronts. I really liked the style of this. And then I did my signature Sarah thing and I just gussied them up, elevate them to a whole new level. How did I do that? Well, step one, I added some fabulous countertops. I went with Caesar Stone quartz countertops and I installed a waterfall edge. Why, you ask? This is a premium finish to install a waterfall counter edge. What's a waterfall counter, you ask? Well, a waterfall is when the countertop comes across the top surface that you use, then it has a crisp mitered corner and it returns all the way down to the floor. And if you're thinking, why would you do that? Well, you do it for looks, but you also do it for durability because if you're in a small space solution, you know those corners are gonna get dinged and nicked and bumped. So when you do that continuous waterfall edge, it's durable, it's practical, and guess what? It's also 
gorgeous. It adds that contemporary element. If your goal is to make in-stock cabinetry that's affordable, look its very best, you need to dress it up. You need to pay attention to all the details. You've heard me say this before, you'll hear me say it again. Details matter, pay attention. These are the winning touches that you can introduce that elevate it to another level. So, hardware. Great hardware makes all the difference. I used a geometric brushed hardware here. It is contemporary, so sleek, and it looks fabulous on these cabinets. But let's talk about what I did to elevate them. This is a treatment that was used in a number of ways in a number of places throughout this suite. I used rough sawn cedar paneling, tongue and groove paneling. And this is what we used on the soffits on the exterior of the house. But I took outside and brought it inside because I like to experiment and use materials in new and different ways. And I decided we could wrap all the cabinets in this rough sawn cedar and also install it as wainscoting and also install it as a wall in the bedroom. So I used it in three different places and I painted it or treated it in three different ways. Are you ready? Let's see how this went. In the kitchen, I had it color matched to the kitchen cabinets and they got such a bang on perfect match. Honestly, it's the finishing touch and it makes it look so good. Here's the trick if you're working with cedar paneling. If you're working with rough sawn, what's gonna happen is when you put the paint on and the paint dries, it's gonna get really, really sharp. And you can honestly, you can cut your hand on it. The burrs kind of pull up from the paint going on. And what you need to do is you need to sand it. You have to give it a light sanding. It'll take all that roughness off. You'll still get tons of texture, but it'll become more smooth. Then apply one more coat and you'll be good to go. In the bedroom, I did a completely different treatment. I decided to do something I'd never done before. I was using wallpaper, this fabulous hilly mountain riff. It was a three-tone wallpaper, cream and gray and green. And I thought, how could I reinforce that in the bedroom? So first I painted all the paneling green, then I painted it a very pale gray, and then I sanded it back so that I would get a bit of the texture of the cedar, a bit of the gray, and a bit of the green all coming together. Sounds like a lot of work? Yeah, it wasn't really. It was pretty easy, and I think it makes it look more textured, more interesting, and it connects the wallpaper pattern to the wall color, and it delivers that texture. Because in renovating this suite, I wanted to introduce texture, personality, pattern. I didn't want it to feel like the unloved space it had always been up until we renovated. The third way I used the paneling was I installed it vertically as wainscoting in the living room. And all we did here was paint it a single color, the exact same color as the trim. So it's quiet, it's durable, it adds some texture, and it gives the continuity that this material has been used throughout the suite. You can think about how you wanna use it, where you wanna use it. If you only wanna paint it one color, that's up to you. I decided to mix and match and play and have fun. One of the game changer elements in this suite was being able to create a dedicated bedroom. It used to be just one cramped open space, sort of like a tiny studio or bachelor apartment. And now we actually have a distinct bedroom. And that was a huge game changer. How do you make the most of a space like this when every inch is at a premium? Use your vertical height. I stacked cabinets, ready to go cabinets that I bought from a big box store. I put drawer units on the bottom, I put cabinet units on the top, and I stacked them all the way to the ceiling because storage is critical. You don't necessarily need to access everything all day, every day. Sometimes you're willing to step on a little stool and tuck something away that you don't need in the current season. It's always important to maximize your vertical height as much as possible. If you wanna maximize your space, you've gotta minimize clutter. Here Here's how wall-mounted sconces come into play. Instead of bedside lights that need to sit on a surface, if you mount them on the wall behind the bed, they're never gonna get in the way. They're always gonna be easy to turn on and off. When you're dealing with a small space, you might wanna think about it in the same way you'd think about life on a ship. Everything needs to be compact and practical and not take up precious space. One of the things we weren't able to achieve with this bedroom was an exterior window. 
but I still wanted the opportunity to let light and air flow in. So instead of a window, I installed a pass-through with a little barn door here. So you can close it off so the light doesn't come in, you can open it up so air and light flows through, and also, did I mention? The coffee maker is just outside. So I have dreams that if you were staying in this space, you might just get a pass-through delivery window of a steaming hot latte in the morning. Wouldn't that be nice? The living area is compact, but look, I was able to fit in a full-size sofa. This is a fabulous sofa from Article. It has a sleek contemporary design. This is an order online, shipped directly to you item that is comfortable. It has a beautiful fabric on it that's a soft chenille. It's easy to assemble and it just sets the tone for this space. So sometimes ordering online can be tricky, not when it comes to this sofa. I'm a huge fan and I definitely order it again. Also having a little dining area was important in this space. So I just tucked in a little bistro chair, a pair of chairs. We've got a soft wool rug underneath, a couple of accent pillows to tie our whole color palette together. And voila, we have a space that used to be cramped and is still space efficient, but now it has a living area, dining area, a great functioning kitchen, a separate bedroom, and did I mention the bathroom? Oh my gosh, this bathroom was without a doubt the ugliest and worst bathroom in the entire house when we started. And now we have double sinks, lots of space, a beautiful big shower. We've got fabulous tile that we've installed. This is when just paying attention to the details and trying to do your very best with whatever you have available to you really comes through. This is a pair of Ikea God Morgan wall-mounted vanities. Available, affordable, easy to use. Check those boxes. This is a great solution. I topped it with a Caesar stone countertop. And then, sometimes faucets can be an indulgence. Sometimes they're the jewelry. Sometimes they're expensive. But you know what? They don't have to be. In this case, I used a small kitchen faucet. And instead of putting it behind the sink, I put it on the side of the sink. And what I like about these faucets is they have a nice high arc. I'm really a fan of a faucet with a gooseneck spout. And this isn't exactly a gooseneck because it's kind of squared off, but that extra height gives extra presence and they look fantastic. What if you want to add an extra accent metal color to your bathroom? What you'll notice here is I've connected the hardware on the vanity with the light fixtures above. The same kind of dark graphite gray charcoal tone and we have the connection between the two. So it's all cool metals here. We've got stainless on the faucets and then this charcoal graphite for the hardware and the decorative lighting. Always make sure if you're using an accent that you repeat it. That is the key. You need balance, you need repetition, and that's how you make it look not like a one-off, but an intentional design decision. I'd say the splurge in this bathroom was doing something that would help elevate the overall look and feel. And that comes in the form of tile. So I used a combination of white and this pale minty aqua tile. I created a little bit of an accent band running through just a little two stripes. You've seen throughout this house, I've really tried to have fun with tile. Vertical stripes, horizontal stripes, bands. Fun tile delivers additional dramatic results. You'll never regret putting the time and the energy into doing something a little more special, investing that bit of creative energy. You don't have to come up with the pattern yourself. Borrow whichever pattern I've done here that you like best, bring it home and try it. I guarantee if you're paying somebody to install each tile one by one, why not get the best possible look you can? So that is the Meadow Suite. What started out as the worst, the ugliest, and may I also say the smelliest space in this house that had the longest journey to go to turn around and become something good, I'd say it looks pretty sweet. This is the Meadow Suite.